Hi, welcome to my TED Talk. Today we're going to talk about... This is what makes up a lot of our role-playing games. When I first started getting into D&D, the concept of dice rolls was the most fun aspect of the game. It's fair. You didn't need to be skilled or super smart or know a meta about D&D to play it. Everyone's experience was random because of dice rolls. Every adventure would be different, every experience would feel unique, and getting a 1 or 20 is an exciting experience. Randomness adds a added level of fun to most tabletop role-playing games. But... Dungeon Masters are the final say in the entirety of the game's rules and how it plays. And yes, the DM's word overrules the book, concept of rules, whatever the heck you think, and especially if you tweet at Jeremy Crawford and he responds with, oh yeah, here's how the rules work, the DM still has a say over that. So what about dice? Naturally, I'd say, uh, yeah, DM can basically make the dice whatever the heck they want. This is a concept that's been talked about a lot. Many different viewpoints have gone into the almighty concept of should the DM dare cheat and change the role of the dice. I really like Matthew Colville's video where he says dice are the future and fate is in our hands and not the dice. Randomness doesn't mean drama and dice are there to create a sense of drama by not knowing the future. As a DM, we can change the dice rolls to make our games interesting and filled with drama. But in the end, someone on the internet telling you what to do shouldn't judge what you do as a DM. Since we're not the DM, you are. This is a great video that dives deep into the concept of fudging dice and how it can be perceived by other dungeon masters. We all have our ways of running games, and it should be noted that you can do it however you want. But there's more I want to look at, specifically my experiences with cheating as a DM. I want to look at newer players and DMs to see why they would even fudge in the first place. So allow me to be someone on the internet telling you what to do, and as you've guessed by the title of the video, I 100% believe that the DM should not fudge their dice. But before we get into that, we gotta give a big shout out to our sponsor, Grim Hollow. A grim dark fantasy campaign setting for 5e, chocked full with enemies, locations, diseases, and villains. If you're a fan of Dark Souls, Witcher, or Ravenloft, this campaign setting would be perfect for you. Personally, I love implementing gothic horror into fantasy, so this setting was right up my alley. I embrace the darkness. Plus, look at that art, it is so good. Go back Grim Hollow and delve deep into the spooky sides of your next campaign. There's a link in the description and the comments below. Alright, so before you decide to go roast me on Reddit, let's go over some of the arguments because I started this video off by contradicting myself. A lot of the points made to rolling a 19 and then saying it's a 3 is to ensure a better experience for players. Meaning, the DM may fudge their roles in favor for the players, and a lot of people support that. You don't want to kill a character in the first game. You've all been planning this game for weeks now, and to finally be able to play and have someone die would not only feel bad, you assume, it could possibly stop this player from playing and may convince the other players that your game isn't fun. You just kill all your players. I don't want to play in a game where I just die to a random dice roll. These are a lot of insecurities new DMs will face when playing the game, which is why from my experience I've seen more seasoned DMs not fudge their roles in comparison to newer DMs, which is also made evidence by this Twitter poll I made. I think they get cold feet about hurting their players. Which isn't a terribly bad thing, it's just that a lot of insecurities you're telling yourself are just wrong. It's a Bad player, not a DM, that gets upset at the idea of a character death. You made the character, you should understand that they'll die. I think the worst part about fudging roles to help your players is that it makes their victories less earned. They may feel awesome for the moment that you roll terrible, but if they know you fudge your roles, and more often than not, they are succeeding in every situation, it will tip the balance of the randomness the game provides. They'll be accustomed to succeeding, and if they fail, it won't feel bad, it'll feel really bad. Now, I know players really like to succeed and all that kind of stuff, but if it happens more often than not, I feel like they'll get suspicious. All right, so I'll be honest and say that it depends on the level for me. If the players are lower level, I tend to make the game easier for them, while my higher level parties tend to get the worst end of the stick and I tend to roll upwards instead of downwards. Now, why would you ever do that? Many people ask. It's difficult to defend a DM who is more selfish in hurting their players with their fudges rather than helping them. It just seems wrong. Well, yeah, if I was a player, I wouldn't want the DM to fudge his 3 into a 17 to save against my old person. That's no fun. But 
Okay, let's play Devil's Advocate. Why would the DM ever want to make it harder for their players? Perhaps they've been succeeding too much. You want to create a challenge for your players so you make the enemy dice rolls much higher. It's not much different than changing their stat blocks on the fly. They do more damage than normal and have more health. What's the difference in changing a dice roll? And I don't think this is a nefarious thing to do. In the end, I think the DM is trying their best to make the game enjoyable by fudging their roll. They want to make the victory even sweeter when you defeat that epic level encounter while making the situation tense. However, to go even deeper, it doesn't always end up this way. Some DMs don't have good poker faces, and they'll end up fudging some of their rolls, and I've fallen accustomed to this, so I should know how it works. We end up getting a god complex that allows us to ignore all of the rules. We end up doing insane amounts of damage, inconsistent abilities. Um, why did our monster get to move twice in a turn and attack? That wasn't their movement speed last turn. The lies tend to seep through, the players start to notice, and they'll feel discouraged because it's not that the enemy is difficult, it's that the dungeon master is against them. And that's discouraging because there's nothing they can do about a dungeon master. And even then, they'll also feel as if their victories aren't earned, tipping the scales and all that kind of stuff that I talked about earlier about making it easier. So, if you're still adamant on fudging your dice rolls because you think it would be more fun for the game... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I um I actually agree with you. In fact, I can still prove both of my points on not fudging my dice rolls and also fudging my dice rolls, and I think you should do it too, and it's kind of the whole point behind my video. The positives to fudging dice rolls are too much to overlook. The DM is allowed to do whatever they want, and if they want to tailor their experience to the players, then they should definitely be allowed to do it. However, with the points I made earlier, all of this falls apart when the players know you fudge your dice rolls. It ruins their experience of randomness. It makes their victories feel flat. It discourages them from winning. So, if you haven't caught on already, no, I don't fudge my dice rolls.